How are everybody doing? Um, this is Chris Drummond from Progressive Action. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, send my condolences to train operator Heidi Candelero. I hope I'm pronouncing her, her name right. And we lost our sister last week. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this live. It's because in the last 10 months, we lost four train operators in very respected TSS. In October, we lost Augie Hernandez. Three months later, we lost train operator George Turner. Two months after that, though she was a supervisor TSS, she was a train operator TSS, Sadmanson. Three months later, we lost like, Kenny Sop, Al Sop. I hope uh, my brother. I hope I'm um, um, pronouncing his name right. And last week we lost our sister Heidi Candelero. And Haiti, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. And do you know anybody? These are five people employed by Transit who was with us last year. That's gone. We're not even talking about the year. The year's not even out yet. We might lose more of our brothers and sisters. Now, you tell me, do you know anyone personally? Friends or family that lost five folks in the past 10 months that they work with? Lost a co-worker or a supervisor? And I don't think this is a coincidence. I think there's a correlation to what's going on. Our brothers and sisters dying prematurely. And OSHA. And there was a, they was created in 1970, the Occupation Safety and Health Act. But OSHA was formed to ensure that we had a workplace free of hazards that kill or insure workers. And one, we has not they we they not doing that. They're not making sure we're in the environment, a healthy environment. When you go to Lexington Avenue, fifty third, on the E and the M, there's a air big air machine filter. I guess it's a filter, and Meaning that that air is toxic. It's so toxic, they got to have that machine plugged in. That should be everywhere. A couple of weeks ago, I saw the report that NYU did on the toxic environment that we work in. Every day. And there's no checks and balances to make sure that we're healthy. The union, no, this is this not cause of... For long? I'm just saying, what gets our union riled up? What is what is their priorities? What do they deem important? What do they deem as the pressing issues affecting us? What is it? All we see in these past few weeks is um these um pilot programs that they shoving down our throat with no assurances for us. Our brothers, we work in an environment where our brothers and sisters are dying about around us. And Transit put out uh, um, um, press releases saying that they do everything in their power to ensure that we're safe. They, Tim Minton put one out last year, then two years ago, in response to the report about this toxic air. There was another one then. The other one was more recent. And when they did say they was going to do some type of pilot program and filters, it was going to be for Long Island Railroad and Metro North anyway. And this is where we at. This can't be ignored. Nobody's going through what we're going through. You know who is going through this? Kind of? Coal miners. But the thing about it is that the Department of Labor has a special division for them. It's called the Mine Safety and Health Administration. 
is a division specifically for coal miners. And they they study, um, they find the coal mines, they monitor the gold, coal mines, they monitor the coal miners. They also got somewhere that kind of something that kind of minds to um they got um daily fatality um summary non metal mining non chargeable deaths and with that is these are just folks that they got this this category and the category is just the non the coal metal non metal non chargeable mining deaths and so not deaths where the mines cave in on them. Or they fall and break their necks. These are just, they say, natural causes. And this year, coal miners around the country, 25 coal miners have died this year of natural death. They say natural causes, I'm sorry. On the job. Kind of like us. It's all natural causes for us, right? It, it has everything to do with everything but the environment in which we work, the air we breathe. Everything. Nobody's talking about that. It should be right now. The, what's going on? What's been going on this year? The, the, our brothers and sisters who died this year, four, five people. And, not, and that's just RTO. They should investigate. There should be an investigation right now. To see what's going on. But they don't care. This company care as much about our well-being. As we care about the Uber driver bringing our food. We just want our food. Our DoorDash. Our Grubhub. We don't care how it's getting to us. We don't care who's bringing it to us. We just want our food. And this company just want these trains and these buses to move. Because that's our function. We don't have families. We don't have lives. We don't have health concerns. We're here to move people around the city. And that's our sole function. They don't give a damn if we die. And something needs to be done. Some, we need to... Even the coal miners, and they have a very, their motile, they don't live long. They get that cold lung. They all type of respiratory diseases. All type of the, 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 the environment is ripe with all type of accidents. It's a very hazardous and dangerous job. But they have some fail safes in place. They're being monitored. Their, their supervisors and the companies that they work for are being fined. And there's some oversight there. There's no oversight for us. They don't give a damn if we die. What's the union have to say about this? What's the union got to say that their membership? Something strange is going on again. Five folks who worked in RTO are dead in the last 10 months. These are not elderly folks. What's the causation? What's the correlation? And I shouldn't be making this. The union should be on this. They should want answers. It don't dawn on them that something's going on. But when when I put this thing, I said they don't care. Well, um, they don't give a damn what happens to us, right? But who are them? Who are they? You decide who they is. Is this the union? Is it transit? Cause I don't understand. I'm trying to figure out. It ain't housing. It ain't our health. It ain't. Discipline? What is it? What is our union's function? What, no, I'm just saying, what is our union function? I know some of you out there, your, your grandfather was union folks. Your, your parents was union folks. 
you believe in the union, but what does they function if we die in here? And nobody has no answers. No one's demanding answers of what's going on with us. The cruise ships. Cruise ships even have some oversight. They can tell you the percentages of their workforce. Crew members on cruise line that are di dying. The percentage of passengers that die on cruise ships. So you know, Carnival Cruises have the highest rate of suicide and murders at 29%. So you know, second is Caribbean Cruise, Royal Caribbean at 12%. Third is Norwegian at 10%. And they got statistics on the percentage of their workforce, how they die, is suicide. If they jumping off the boat, well, they have um, the, the name of the company. I'm going to try to find what's the name of it. It's called, um, so we know it's called the International Journal, and the company, it's oversight, International Journal of Travel Medicine and Global Health. So what agency is monitor us, our health, the air we breathe, and what's happening to our, our hearing, our eyesight? Our respiratory system. Who monitoring us? Who? Who cares about what happens to us? And the thing about OSHA. OSHA is supposed to ensure workplaces are free of hazards that kill or injure us. What? What? OSHA and NYPD is one entity now? Who's ensuring no one is even trying to ensure that we are safe from physical harm and murder and assault. Are safe from breathing in hazardous, toxic air. That's what we got in, with the uh, um, in common coal mines. We're underground. We're breathing dirty, toxic air. One of the reports said, and it's in our cabs. It's as bad in our cabs as it is in, on the platforms. And nobody seems to be doing anything about it. That's a fact. I don't want to I don't want to talk about this. There's a lot of this stuff I don't want to talk. I wish I didn't have to. If transit would have would left me alone, there would be no Chris Drummond making life. There would be no Chris Drummond in the union. But they wouldn't leave me alone. Like a lot of us, they don't let us do our jobs. You know the old timers say, first thing they say, know your job. Plenty of us, most of us, the vast majority of us know our jobs and they won't leave us alone. And on top of that, we work in a toxic environment. Literally and metaphorically with the supervisors and these bullies that we work with. But think about that. We looking all around, we tense, we paranoid, we on point, trying to be on point, trying to operate under all these stressful situations. And on top of that, we got toxic air, we breathing in toxic um, 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 chemicals and metals. Like I said a few weeks ago. A hundred times smaller than the human hair, I think. I forget the exact, but just, we just breathing it in. And on top of that, we got cowardly supervisors, small men and women in positions of authority who bully us, who try to intimidate us, who write us up for nothing. Give us re-instructions that we don't need. This is why we dying. I think. All these. All these amalgam of things. That we endure on a daily basis. How are we going to live through that? How are you going to come out of that unscathed? The, the fact that you. Like I said this before. Excuse me for being redundant about it. That you submerging your anger and your what's up, bro, and your resentment 
and in some cases your hatred of supervisors who are derelict in their duty, who don't do their jobs, and the small-minded nothings who couldn't work anywhere other than this company where it is no accountability. Richard Davey, please stop making them videos. They're insulting how you was working with Richie Davis. Well, Richie Davis didn't come to us. It's a legion of us who didn't care about that contract. So I'm glad you have this relationship, this insensuous relationship with Richie Davis. How we, how y'all gave us, how y'all gave us this contract. You want to give us more money, right? And this is what I'm talking about. Everything I said that we go through, Everything that we endured, if COVID never happened, that god-awful hellish pandemic, that scourge that hit us in 220, if that never happened, we're entitled to hazard pay. Because our very job title is dealing with hazards every day. And I think this union and transit, out of good faith, and our governor, who cares nothing about this, need to put a blue ribbon panel together. Forget the, the fair beating. The fair, they want, if you wanted to stop the fair, listen, nobody, listen, y'all don't care about the fair beating. I think y'all do. But y'all didn't need no blue ribbon panel. Waste that money. Y'all could give that to us to figure out how to stop um, fair evasion. That's their priority, not our health. Moving these trains, not our health, not our well-being. We don't get mental days. We work with a lot of the mental supervisors, but we don't get mental days. And put a blue ribbon panel out there to find out what's going on here. Why men and women in their 50s and 40s dying? Why so many folks in RTO dying? Let's try to get some answers. Let's try to put some, make some changes to make it safer and healthier for us. And brothers and sisters, this union, and let me say this, September, in September, um, you have to have, you have to have your dues paid up. You have to be up to date with your dues. If you want to run for office, Set to you, everybody got had their dues paid up by September. So call the union hall, ask for Roy, and pay your dues. Because I think there's plenty of y'all, hundreds of y'all, thousands of y'all of, of our brothers and sisters out there who can do a better job than most of these reps out here representing us. If you want to call them reps. So if you want to make change, and we have to vote. There's 8,000 of us, 7,000 of us. I don't know the numbers. I got checked. This, this, you, this leadership don't give a damn about RTO. And let's talk politics. Why should they give a damn? They can get in office. You will no power. Your power is your vote. And if you exercise your vote, and if you vote more than 1,800, if you just vote one, just, just this election, give it a try. Take that ballot, fill it out, mail it, call, and make sure your dues is paid. If you don't get your ballot, like Tramel said, call, excuse me, call, pretend it's timekeeping. Pretend it's the crew office and you want to work hard, yo. Call and say, I haven't received my ballot. You will get your ballot. And be proud of the process. And let's see what happens this election. Let's start anew. Because they got to go. Uh, you know how P Puffy said rock the boat? Our bother is they got to go. This is the year that they, this is going to be the election cycle where they got to go. We know Canel is gone. And we know 90% of his officers, his so-called, his so-called union reps, they gone. But we got to go for We want the big fish. Richie Davis got to go. He's unworthy. 
He's not fit. He's rogue. His behavior. I heard he was in the. I heard. Could be a rumor. I don't know. Word at trans is he got in the conductor's cab the other day. A conductor. And didn't say nothing to the conductor. Didn't say good morning. Didn't say good afternoon. Didn't say good day. He didn't say nothing. That's the type of unprecedented con man. That's his manner of being a president, so called president. Like I said before, Toussaint was equipped. Samson was equipped. Utano was equipped. And all of them, you have your grievances with them. I can dig it. I understand. But Richie Davis is not. Nevis' his partner in crime, Canelo Gomez. They gotta go. They gotta go. TGG. It was triple G. TGG. They gotta go. That's where we at right now. Our life is a living. They got cameras there in our calves. The unions walked around trying to elicit conductors, and it's gonna be on. What they call it, pilot program, conductors. They are asking conductors, the union, if they want to wear cameras. This is what our union going to do. So, you know, it's crazy. So, everywhere, and like cameras mean something. What, what they going to do with cameras? These dudes are attacking us right now and saying, cheese, they know who they are. Our sister threw weeks ago last month. She had, that was right there. They let them go. They attack and assaulting us. They're doing everything. God awful things in the city. And they give them death disappearance tickets. The judges, I don't care what they say they did, what Hoku said she did in the state assembly and said, excuse me, in Albany, they did nothing with the bail reform. They did nothing with that. This city is lawless. They stabbed the EMT. The asylum seekers are attacking folks. Not all of them. They deserve a shot, but not all. But the asylum seekers, this city is, they're sleeping on, they have the asylum seekers on the sidewalks. This city is lawless. And we got a decision to make about this city. Us. Us, transit. Us, our brothers and sisters who work for transit, who work for the MTA. As employees of MTA and citizens and voters. Because the police, I believe, I don't know. But something stopping these police from doing what they need to do. Maybe they feel that no matter what they do, the judge is going to let them out. So they, they wasting their time. They're chasing their tails. For what? It's nothing. What do they have to do? To keep someone locked up in this town. What, how egregious does the crime and the offense. How many old elderly people you got to bash in the head. How many people. How many babies got to get shot. How many stores got to be marauded and ran over. And all the merchandise took in. How many people have to go on buses without paying. How many people have to jump over turns. How many people have to assault us for us to have a semblance of some justice in this town? And our union don't have nothing to say about that. About that? Come on, come on. Our union don't have nothing to say about its workforce, their membership, getting abused, people walking about by us every day, cussing us. Trying to degrade us? Verbally abuse us? I'm not even talking about the sword. I'm talking about people that just cuss us out every day. People that faint at us like they're going to hit uh, the conductors. And then you got nerve to say that we ain't observing the platform long enough? Right? This one of us got to get our head chopped off? And brothers and sisters, you're not safe. Don't look at, don't open that window. You can pop them doors. Because somebody's going to be standing in that marker they have that says they shouldn't be standing there. 
They just invited folks to stand in that spot at 125th, the so-called pilot program. How foolish was that? How transparent was that? Nobody talked to you about it. Nobody talked to you about the, the speed, raise the speed in the adjacent track, right? Nobody talked to you about it. Oh, what they're talking to our brothers and sisters about now is wearing them cameras. So we got cameras in the cab. We got cameras. In, 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 these cameras ain't for... They, they got cameras all, all around the system. They know what the people look like, what they're dressed. Because the people were saying they might as well be taking pictures, gang signs, doing the Buffalo stand like we used to do on 42nd Street back in the days, taking photos. They know who they are. So what the cameras going to do? The cameras are just another means for us to de de discipline. And the cameras are on the train. So come on, man. We know. We know. We got to use the bathroom sometime. I remember one time. Yeah, y'all say, damn, drumming. I'm telling you. I remember one time I came out. I When I first, you know, I, I didn't, I always wanted to come to work. I like come to work. I mean, they did that, that dirty backdoor thing with me with the 70%. And put me on 30% because I got sick. And this is the company we work for. Don't forget, this is the company, the AT we work for, that during the pandemic, they threatened to punish us for trying to protect ourselves. They threatened to punish us for putting masks on. They'll punish us for trying to stay, to be safe and healthy. But they will do nothing to keep us safe. Nothing. They care nothing about our safety. So, yeah, I remember when I first came out. It was like the first six months or something. And I was feeling sick. I was feeling sick. I was feeling so I didn't, but I wanted to come to work. I didn't want to leave. Like a lot of us, no good deed going punished. We don't want to leave nobody stuck. We dedicated workers, Dad. We some dedicated folks. But I felt sick. I felt nauseous. I shouldn't have came to work, but I did. You know why I did? I don't care who listening. And I'm not the only one. I had a plastic bag. A garbage bag. I had garbage bags, paper towel, hand sanitizer, toilet tissue. And I had to use the bathroom. And it was between Lexington and no, Court Square and Lexington. I had three minutes to use the bathroom. And I was feeling sick. It was either that or I was going to go on myself. I had no choice. There's a lot of us that in those positions now that you push out. Don't, don't let them push out. You use the bathroom. I don't care if you're at Times Square, 59th and, and, and Columbus Circle, Atlantic Terminal. If you got to use the bathroom, you stop that train and you use the bathroom. And like I said, they don't care if you die. That's a fact. They don't care about your health and well-being. Get that through your head. Stop trying to compare transit to other agencies and other professions. No, it's not like that. You can justify it in your head all you want, but that is not true. And you got to use the bathroom. You stop and you use that bathroom. I don't care where you at. 125th, 42nd, West 4th Street, you use that bathroom. You be healthy. You can't even eat your lunch. You're walking in the terminal and they say that's you on the stand. You can't even put your food in the microwave. Your food can't even digest. You can't even, you have a choice. Should I use the bathroom or should I eat? I use the bathroom and you eating on the train. And you ain't supposed to be, and they will slug you for eating on the train. You take care of yourself. Don't ever be in your mind and your head, what about transit? What are they going to think? What are they going to do? You come first. Because if you don't come first, your, your family ain't going to have a mother. Your family ain't going to have a father. Your grandkids ain't going to have a grandparent or grandmother. Your brother or sister ain't going to have a sibling. Your wife or husband ain't going to have a spouse. You pe pe keep putting the company first that don't give a damn about you. That let supervisors walk all over you. That won't allow you to have lunch. Who sends sick inspectors to your house to harass you. You can't even take a goddamn nap. You take a nap, they calling you. You don't pick up your phone because you're trying to get better. To get back to work, they write you up. So what? You decide not to do an RDO. This is who we work for. Do y'all get it? 
Do y'all get it while we dying? While we got high? Some of us ain't never had high blood pressure in our lives. In our lives. We have ailments we never had. So we can't even chew our food. You think this company care about us? Are you out your mind? They think you're peasants. They think you're peasants that would do anything for a dollar. That's what they think. Pay them, they do it. Tell them to shut up and take this money. They do it. That's what they think of you. And you, you, some of you who think dispatches and suit, you're part of the club? You're part, you getting bonuses? Can you get flowers when somebody passes, God forbid, when you lose someone? You think you get the humanity that that are the the the, the um concessions that they show each other, whether they hate each other or not? You think you get that? That they get at 180 at 2 Broadway? Some of these general soups? Some of these other folks have been with transit management, like that 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 um general soup that got caught. And I don't think that general soup got caught. I think they didn't like him. I think he was a sacrificial lamb. I think that goes on all the time. And again, they got this news report. They paint all us in the um the Long Island River Metro North sneeze and and MTA. RT on buses, get pneumonia. So you got to use the bathroom. Use the bathroom. You're five? You little kid? You're going to hope they don't care you shit on yourself? If transit could get you pampers and depends for PPEs, they would. They wouldn't care if you came to the stations pissed on yourself or emaciated with feces. You think they would care? They would probably, they would maybe make you, probably make you use an AVA or your OTO. This is the god awful place, but it don't got this place we work for. So, like I said about the cameras, so I did what I had to do. I did the three minutes, I, two minutes. I don't know how long it take for the, the 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 Romeo or the E and the M to go through the tubes. But I handled my business, wrapped up that bag, threw it away, hand sanitized, went back, and I was good. And so you're going to do that now. So now I smile, you on candid camera. Now you got to suffer the humiliation of you. And we have to do that. You want us to push us out. You want, us to, you want this railroad to move, but you don't give a damn how we do it, though. That's on us. You figure it out. Just get on your train and get on your bus. That's who we dealing with. That's how they feel about us. You can sugarcoat it any way you want. And we're going to have to eventually. We all want to do our jobs. It ain't about taking over this place. It's about treating us with some respect. And treating us with some humanity. That is sorely lacking at MTA. It's sorely lacking in stations, RTO, and then buses. And we gonna put a stop to that. We have to. Or we're gonna die. And we're all gonna die. We know that. For those who say we're all gonna die. Yes, we all are gonna die. That's just the cycle of life. But we do deserve to, to, to live and to be grandfathers. We do um, deserve to sit on that proverbial rocking chair on the porch that we want. We do deserve to enjoy our retirement after dedicated uh, uh, so much time to this job, to our professions. So, so and so you know, statistically and labor relations, you know that three or four percent of us get in trouble. Constantly go back and forth to two Broadway. The ninety, and I'm not on that ninety nine hundred percent thing, but the overwhelming majority of us do our job. Do everything we're supposed to do. And still, what's going on, brother? Still get treated with disrespect. So, we got to find out. The union has to find out. TA has for Our politicians have to find out. I'll be going to see mine. Have to find out 
Why are we dying down here? Why so many of our younger brothers are, why are we dying so young down here? Why a month before retirement, a month after, we are dying? Some of us dying on the property. Why is that happening? And again, I say to you, ask your friends, ask your family, where they, if they know anywhere, anyone, where they at, any professions, where five folks they know in the last 10 months that they work with are now gone. Something's going on here and it needs to be addressed. And again, let me just say this in closing. We got a choice to make. Now, I'm going to talk about snitching and all that the next episode. Everybody's an expert on what's snitching and what is. Yeah, y'all. All right. We're going to talk about that. Who's a snitch and who's not. Let's break that down. That's next time. But we have, we civilians right now, right? We have families out here. This town is lawless. People are leaving this town in droves. Folks are going south. I never, folks, folks who never thought, never even entertained living down south are moving south. Because this town, New York City, and I, I thought when we we voted for um Adams, hundred black men law enforcement, ex NY ex cop, he was gonna put. His foot on some necks. And we was going to be safe. And they cause. They doing anything they want up top. And if they doing everything they want on top. Where's them. Um, um, asylum seekers. Going to be this winter. They, they just going to sit in them hotel rooms. They don't have no visas. And they not getting jobs. They don't like where they at now. They are very upset and disgruntled right now. A lot of them. Sleeping in their clothes, sleeping on the sidewalk. People riding by, unfairly walking by, talk, you know, berating them and what have you. Where are they going to go? They're going to be on our trains. Where are these men too ill? We know this. The mentally ill going. They don't have the beds. She didn't get no beds for them. But she gave them lawmakers in Albany a 29% raise. These folks that work half the year. These folks that are getting our coat money. Where are our coat money going? Or get some of them politicians and tell them to change these um, bail reform laws. Because we're getting hurt. We're getting sore. We're getting beat up down here. We're getting abused, excuse me, down here and on buses. That's a fact. And no one's doing anything about it. But we got a choice to make. I think police, I think the cameras and all these, the poll, we got kids. I got kids, relatives and all that. I can dig it. But I think the cops ain't moving because a lot of the cops ain't moving because they don't want to be on camera. Can't do stop and frisk. I'm not saying I was for stop and frisk, but there was some middle ground to stop and frisk, right? There's a lot of guns out here and there's a lot of cowards with guns. When I was coming up, yeah, we this is, everybody had to misspend views, but we respected. Uh, if you was in the game, you was in the game. On the monk thieves and dishonor the monk thieves. But you have respect for old folks? How Miss Jones? How Miss Robinson? How Miss Wilson? How Mr. Grant? You have some respect, they don't care. They soon to slash our grandmothers and grandfathers then look at them. This is what we are living through right now. If this ain't a purge, what is it? When you can walk in a store with a shopping bag and go in there and take what you want, with no consequences? What kind of place are we living in? When you can stab and assault somebody and not get a bill, they just can't give you a listen. Whenever, whatever I did my youth, I say to folks I know, it was cops and robbers, you had the job to do. You catch me, I'm going to jail. That's the price I pay for doing what I'm doing. There's consequences. And a lot of the gentlemen, and they accepted that. But these kids and these folks, grown as men too and women, with their kids in some cases, are doing things and they don't care. They don't care about the consequences. You, want, you know why? They don't think there's any consequences. Almost like our supervisors we work with. So we, I think the, the law, NYPD, can have to move with extreme prejudice. 
And it ain't going to be pretty. But these unions, all these unions got to sit down and have a talk about ensuring that we, we, we're safe and our families are safe. That there got to be some law and order. Get your money. Get your bag. I can dig it. I don't judge nobody, but don't rob. Don't rob. Don't hurt nobody. This government ain't, you got banks do what they do with us. Loan shocks. You have pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies doing what they want. They drug dealers. Got people selling, doing what they want. The liquor selling um, um, malt liquor to our babies. You got people doing all type of crimes. And just because they got licenses and certification is legal. It's right. It's just. You're coming around. Listen, I ain't vote for Trump. But you're spending so much time trying to indict him. He ain't the only president. All his politicians are dirty. You're wasting your time on how many indictments are you going to do with Trump and you let these criminals go? That makes sense. This, this, this is perverse right now. They got me reevaluating everything I believed in in regard to my political affiliations. How are people who robbing and stealing and maiming and hurting and murdering have more rights than us? Because we have none evidently at transit. We, there needs to be some serious conversation and our union don't seem to be having it. But I don't think Richie Davis is equipped to have it. I don't. And again, September, everybody got to have their dues paid. Nobody should be running unopposed. If you want to be whatever you want to be, a recording secretary, vice chair, e-board member, you got some questions to answer. And vet these candidates. Everybody named their mama's all off the road in the union right now doing nothing. That's why, listen, that's the greatest, that's a hell of a recruiting tool. Because our brothers and sisters saying, him, huh? What? I can get some of that. Go get a piece. But work for, yeah, you right, too. I forgot about the weed. I'm sorry, I'm going to digress for a minute. I'll get back to the election. The weed. Smoking on buses. Smoking next to our cars. They don't give a damn, even though it take a lot of the weed for you to come up dirty. A lot, trust me. But they don't care if we have. I think they're doing it just to, so we could come up dirty. The hatred for us at MTA is, is mind-boggling. But they're smoking this weed all around us every minute, almost blowing it in our cars. And you saying, God damn, what about I get a random or something? But they don't care. Transit don't care. They talk a good one. Like, like we was brave and we was valiant. Like they cared about our sac- sacrifice, right? That in the metro car to get you three thousand, four thousand. If they cared about us, our brothers and sisters who was here, and listen, get the money. Everybody that works for transit deserves what they getting. Deserve that four grand. But if they cared about us, our brothers and sisters who were there in the heart of the pandemic in two twenty would be getting a check. They don't care who did what. They don't care. Give the peasants some pennies. They don't care. And I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm being honest. Who's worse? Transit or this union leadership we have? I don't know. But the election's coming to be here in no time. So next September, um, September coming, make sure your dues are paid. And if you want to run, run. Nobody should be, everybody should be opposed. You want to be a union rep? Prove to us why you should be a union rep. And look at dudes. Remember who was fighting. Remember who's around you who talks, for, who's about fighting. Not the ones talking about it's our fault. We bring it on our own. Not the ones saying we, we need to stay under the radar. Not the, not the ones saying that, yo, the union, you got to support the union. Regardless of what they do or don't do for us. And it's mostly what they don't do. We got to vote this year. They got to go. We got to vote this year. 
We have to, sh- RTO, you have to stay, you have to show that you are a force to be reckoned with. That you don't take us for granted. You don't lose, unilaterally do things in our department and don't run to buy us. You give us some trash, but we got the smart, listen, smart people everywhere. But RTO, in my eyes, the state are unique folks. And our defiance and not wanting this contract, this nothing contract that we got, our defiance, now show some real defiance. Vote. Vote. Get these folks out of here. Vote. Get that ballot. Show them RTL ain't no joke. And things are going to change down here. They have to. The transit is not worth your life. Things are got to change. Nothing stays the same. Nothing stays the same. Life is about change. So everybody be safe. But you move New York, so what?